Good morning. Good to see you all here this morning. This is a blessing. This is the second Sunday of Easter, first Sunday after the Feast of the Resurrection. And we begin with the opening song, the opening hymn, O Sons and Daughters of the King. Please stand for that. the most important part. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. Let us then confess our sins to God, our Father, most the merciful God. We confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your temporal and eternal punishment. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us, forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways, to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his Son to die for you, and for his sake forgives you all your sins. As a called and ordained servant of Christ, and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.
Lord be with you. Let us pray. Lord, we are too easily captive to fear and the shadow of death. Break through the closed doors of our hearts and shine your light into our darkness, that knowing the forgiveness of our sins, we may no longer be bound by any anxiety or afflicted by any doubt. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Please be seated as we give our attention to the scripture readings for today. Test one, test. Good morning. The first reading comes from Acts chapter 4, beginning with the 32nd verse. The full number of those who believed were of one heart and soul, and no one said that any of the things that belonged to him was his own, but they had everything in common. And with great power, the apostles were giving their testimony to the resurrection of the Lord Jesus, and great grace was upon them all. There was not a needy person among them, for as many were as were owners of lands or houses sold them and brought the proceeds of what they sold and laid it at the apostles' feet. And it was distributed to each as any had need. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And our epistle lesson comes from 1 John chapter 1, beginning with the first verse. That which was from the beginning, which we have heard, which we have seen with our eyes, which we looked upon and have touched with our hands concerning the word of life, the life was made manifest, and we have seen it and testified to it and proclaimed to you the eternal life, which was with the Father and was made manifest to us. That which we have seen and heard we proclaim also to you, that you too may have fellowship with us. And indeed our fellowship is with the Father and with his Son, Jesus Christ. And we are writing these things so that our joy may be complete. This is the message we have heard from him and proclaim to you, that God is light and in him is no darkness at all. If we say we have fellowship with him while we walk in the darkness, we lie and do not practice the truth. But if we walk in the light, as he is in the light, we have fellowship with one another, and the blood of Jesus, his son, cleanses us from all sin. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. If we say we have not sinned, we make him a liar, and his word is not in us. My little children, I am writing these things to you so that you may not sin. But if anyone does sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous. He is the propitiation of our sins, not for ours only, but also for the sins of the whole world. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please stand for the reading of the Holy Gospel. The Holy Gospel according to St. John, the 20th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. On the evening of that day, the first day of the week, the doors being locked where the disciples were for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them and said to them, Peace be with you. When he had said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples were glad when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, even so I am sending you. And when he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of anyone, they are forgiven. If you withhold forgiveness from anyone, it is withheld. Now Thomas, one of the twelve, called the twin, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see in his hands the mark of the nail, and place my finger into the mark of the nails, and place my hand into his side, I will never believe. Eight days later, his disciples were inside again, and Thomas was with them. Although the doors were locked, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hands, and put out your hand and place it in my side. Do not disbelieve, but believe. Thomas answered him, My Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, Have you believed because you have seen me? 
Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have believed. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not written in this book, but these are written so that you may believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that by believing you may have life in his name. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Please be seated. Grace, mercy, and peace be yours from God our Father and the risen Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. This is the Sunday when we get to use Doubting Thomas as our whipping boy. He makes us feel good about our faith or the lack of. However, lest we get carried away, I ask you this question. Did Thomas want anything more from Jesus than Jesus did for the rest of the disciples? I don't think so. And yet he is forever labeled as Doubting Thomas, the doubter of all time. Unfairly, he gets that label, I believe. Look at John 11, John chapter 11. You'll see that Thomas volunteered to go with Jesus back to Judea to minister to Lazarus' family at Lazarus' death. Even with the threat of death, hanging over their heads should Jesus return to Judea. None of the rest of the disciples volunteered to go with Jesus at risk, at peril of their own life. And Thomas also made today's great confession that we read in the, Old Test in the, in the gospel lesson for today. No one else made this confession. Only Thomas said, my Lord and my God. I don't think we can say 
O doubting Thomas of little faith. No, we can't say that about Thomas. So let's move on with our continuing celebration of the resurrection of Jesus. But we'll try this again here. Christ is risen. He's risen indeed. Alleluia. Amen. Don't let me sneak any in on you. Pay attention now. So today we're going to take a fresh look at this first Sunday after Easter. Think about this Easter story. As the folks in the church were filing out through the reception line, shaking the pastor's hand, a woman came up to him and said, great service, great sermon. I've never seen so many people in church before. The pastor thought, I don't know who she is, but she's obviously impressed with the full church. Then as she was shaking the pastor's hand on her way out the front door, she added this, do you think it will make any difference? So the pastor held on to her hand so she couldn't escape. And he said, what? Will what make a difference? Easter. Will Easter make a difference for all these people who are here? Or will it be the same tomorrow as it was yesterday? Perceptive question, isn't it? So... I ask you, will Easter make a difference for all the people who were here last Sunday? Now, I wasn't here last Sunday. I was in Hawthorne, so I trust that you were either here or at another church. But will Easter make a difference in your life? I think Easter does make a difference in three different ways that we're going to look at today. First, Easter brings us the message of life in the presence of of the living Lord Jesus, and second, Easter brings us peace, and third, Easter gives us purpose to our lives. Living in the presence of the living Lord. That's what changed the women on the first Easter morning, isn't it? At first they were trembling in fear, astonished that there was no dead body in the tomb, and then the angel breaks the silence, he has risen, he is not here. That's a game changer. That's a game changer for everyone. Despair turned into hope. And that's what Easter does. Hope plus victory. Not a maybe kind of hope, but a certainty that because Jesus lives, we too shall live. Not only do we live in eternity, but we live right now in Jesus' victory over death. That's ours as believers in Christ, victory over death. Easter changes us. We are now post-Easter Christians who live in a way to bring hope into a broken world. No more of the same old thing in the same old sin-wrecked world. Easter makes a difference. We look at things differently. Our eyes of faith see living proof of our hope. We see the forgiving power of Jesus. Our guilt is taken away from us. Our sins removed from us as far as the east is from the west. Everything is fresh in the risen Lord Jesus Christ. He makes all things new for us. Sorrow is no longer devastating. No more excruciating pain at the loss of a loved one. No more grieving as those who have no hope. That's what makes a difference for Christians. That's the Easter difference. Now, Kathy and I can attest to the hope that the Easter message brings to us, that the living Lord brings to each one of us. As I told the Bible class on Tuesday, Kathy's brother was not a religious man. He was a good man, and there's no doubt about that, not a religious man. So Tom was not a part of the Lord's kingdom. However, his impending death brought him closer to the Lord. And I was able to baptize my brother-in-law four days before cancer claimed his life. And as I say, it's not how one begins with the Lord, it's how one ends with the Lord. Tom finished his course in this world as a baptized child of God. Definitely, Definitely a part of our Lord's kingdom. 
That's the power of the resurrected living Lord Jesus. Power to save all those who believe and are baptized in the name of the resurrected Jesus. Easter makes a difference. As St. Paul writes in 1 Corinthians 15, the great resurrection chapter, for I deliver to you <clears throat> as of first importance what I also received, that Christ died for our sins in accordance with the scriptures, that he was buried, that he was raised on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. Now, if Christ is proclaimed as raised from the dead, how can some of you say there is no resurrection of the dead? But in fact, Christ has been raised from the dead, the first fruits of those who have fallen asleep. We are the next fruits of the resurrected Jesus. Until, until then, we have the resurrected Jesus with us a living, powerful presence in our lives, no matter what, no matter what happens to us. So think about this. People who live with chronic disease or people who, like my brother-in-law, lived with a terminal disease, they still have the powerful presence of Jesus in their lives. He will either heal them or give them the courage to live with their disease and allow them to be a witness of God's sufficient grace, all sufficient grace, in Christ Jesus. Now, I could go on for a long time about the powerful presence of the living Lord. But I think you get the picture. Easter makes a difference because the living Lord Jesus Christ makes a difference. A day and night difference. Think of this illustration from Robert Louis Stevenson's poem titled The Lamplighter. Boy from the country came to London to visit his grandparents, and he was sitting out on their porch one night as the sun was going down and it was growing dark, and as he watched, he saw a man coming down the street, and the man stopped on the corner beside each lamppost. And then the boy saw this great ball of light come bursting into the darkness as the man passed from street corner to street corner. And the boy watched in wonderment, wonderment as the street gradually changed from darkness into light. He became so excited that he ran in and told his grandmother, there's a man outside poking holes in the darkness. That man outside is the man inside of us the true God, true man, the resurrected Jesus, he pokes holes in the darkness of this world. Easter makes a difference, a day and night difference. It gives us a profound sense of peace, peace knowing that the triune God is in control and peace knowing that we can surrender our lives to Jesus and peace knowing that he is going to take care of us, that he's going to provide for us and and peace knowing that we can give everything that causes us worry and pain to God. We can give it to God. Peace knowing that the Holy Spirit is going to strengthen our faith. Doesn't mean that God's going to meet all of our demands for everything that we want. He will, however, give us all that we need in the risen Lord Jesus Christ. Easter is that peace that Paul talks about, a peace that passes all human understanding, a peace that knows that we belong to Jesus no matter what, no matter what. Good times or bad times, Jesus breathes on us, gives us the Holy Spirit and says to us, peace be with you. All is forgiven, all is at peace, living in the presence of of the living Lord Jesus Christ. God is still in control. And finally, Easter makes a difference because it gives us a purpose to our lives. That purpose is to share the gospel, to share the gospel. Why else would God want us in his kingdom if not to share the good news of Jesus? 
If you go back to our text for today, Jesus says, as the Father has sent me, even so I am sending you. The responsibility of telling and retelling the gospel rests with us, the baptized. So take comfort in this message of a risen Christ. It's not a message of standing at the empty tomb in tears. It's not a message of being afraid. It's not a message of remaining astonished and be bewildered. It's, this is, ours is a message of power and hope and peace. The message of the living Lord being present with us. A message to, that we should take out of this church, out of our Savior Lutheran Church, and we should take this message and spread it far and wide. Look at the women who were the first to the tomb on that Easter morning. They overcame their initial astonishment and their fear to be the first ones to tell the good news of Jesus. They didn't keep the message of the risen Lord all to themselves. How can we? Why should we not share this great message of the resurrected Jesus? Think of how many potential disciples there that there are huddled in fear behind locked doors, so to speak, spiritually. Why not share the Easter message? It's too good not to be shared. Jesus isn't dead. He's not in the grave. Easter's message makes a difference. As Paul writes, faith comes from hearing and hearing through the word of Christ. God's word of a living Lord Jesus changes doubt into belief. Look what that word did for Thomas. And it does the same for us. And we can make that same great confession that Thomas made. My Lord and my God. Easter makes a difference. Easter makes a difference. It gives us the powerful presence of Christ, it gives us hope and it gives us peace because Jesus lives. Simple message of Easter, Jesus lives. Christ is risen. He's risen indeed. Alleluia. Amen. To him only be the glory forever and ever. Amen. We continue with the Nicene Creed. Please stand. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ. sits at the right hand of the Father, and he will come again with glory to judge both the kingdom and the earth. His kingdom will have no end, and I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who to the Father and the Son together is worshiped and glorified, and spoke by the prophets. And I believe in one holy Christian apostolic church, I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For all his adopted children in Christ, that they would always long for the pure spiritual milk of the word, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the church on earth, that her ministers would faithfully pronounce the free forgiveness of sins to all repentant sinners and to show forth the peace declared between God and man in the resurrection of Jesus Christ. 
Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the authorities God has placed over us in federal, state, and local governments, that he would give them the desire to serve with integrity and honor and to work for the benefit of all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the sick and the sorrowful, for those who mourn, and for all who stand in need of our prayers, let us pray to the Lord. For all who eat and drink the body and blood of Christ, the word of life, that forgiven of their sins, they may also have fellowship with God and one another, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Lord God, Heavenly Father, we thank you that out of your indescribable grace and for the sake of your Son, you have given us the Holy Gospel and instituted the Holy Sacraments that through them we may have comfort and the forgiveness of sin. Grant us your Holy Spirit that we may heartily believe your word and through the Holy Sacraments establish our faith day by day, by day until at last we obtain eternal salvation through the same Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give the thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly good, right, and salutary that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you, Holy Lord, Almighty Father, everlasting God. And most especially are we bound to praise you on this day for the glorious resurrection of your Son, Jesus Christ, the very Paschal Lamb, who was sacrificed for us and bore the sins of the world. By his dying, he has destroyed death, and by his rising again, he has restored us to everlasting life. Therefore, with Mary Magdalene, Peter, and John, and with all the witnesses of the resurrection, with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name evermore, praising you and singing. Blessed are you, Lord of heaven and earth, for you have had mercy on those whom you created and sent your only begotten Son into our flesh to bear our sin and be our Savior. With repentant joy, we receive the salvation accomplished for us by the all-availing sacrifice of his body and his blood on the cross. Gathered in the name and remembrance of Jesus, we beg you, O Lord, to forgive Renew and strengthen us by your word and spirit. Grant us faithfully to eat his body and drink his blood as he bids us to do in his own testament. Gather us together, we pray, from the ends of the earth to celebrate with all the faithful the marriage feast of the Lamb in his kingdom, which has no end. Gr graciously receive our prayers, deliver and preserve us. To you alone, O Father, be all glory, honor, and worship with the Son and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but the rest from evil. Forever and ever. Amen.
Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night when he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take eat, this is my body, which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. In the same way also, he took the cup after supper, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen.
Washed away by the blood of the Lamb, go now in the loving presence of your Lord Jesus Christ. Depart in his peace. Amen. Please stand as we sing a song of thanksgiving. Thanks to you, Almighty God, that you have refreshed us through this solitary gift, and we implore you that of your mercy you would strengthen us through the same, in faith towards you and in fervent love toward one another, through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look upon you with his favor and give you his peace. Amen. Amen.
Please be seated. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. Amen. Can't say that enough. Um, bring your attention to news and notes down at the bottom there. Um, Bible studies. We have begun a new Bible study. It's called Being the Lutheran. It's based on this book here by the same name. And it uh, started last Tuesday night, and it's going to continue on Tuesday nights for the next uh, nine weeks. We're going to have a 7 p.m. start time for that Bible study, not a 6 p.m. Bible study. We moved it back to give people a chance to get home, get something to eat, and then prepare for the Bible study on Tuesday nights. And I've been asked about what it's about. It's not an autobiography of Martin Luther. It's about an identity that we find in Jesus. And the author himself says, the author is Pastor A. Trevor Sutton, and he says that the name Jesus is used four times more often in this book than the name Martin Luther. So it's not a book about Martin Luther, but it is a book about the movement that he began with the Reformation of the Church. Um, and this week we're going to take up the the chapter is chapter number two, and it's called Luke Warm. Luke Warm. So he, the uh, the author has a, a good way of a writing, a nice winsome style of writing, and he captures your attention and keeps it. And so these are Zoom Bible studies, and uh, if you wish to join our Bible study, you can get a book from Donna. Do you have the books? Donna has the books. And uh, if you want to make a $14 donation to the church to help offset or defray the cost of the books, uh, you're welcome to do that as well. So and please join us if you can. If you intend to join us, get me your email so I can send you a notification and an invitation link uh, to the meeting on Tuesday night. So I don't have anything else. Are there any other announcements that need to be made at this time? Um, it's good to see you all in church. That's my announcement. That's great. And so we're going to do what we do when I'm here. Hopefully, maybe you'll do it when Pastor Dewar is here. But uh, depart in peace. Serve the Lord. Okay, let's try it again. Depart in peace and serve the Lord. Amen.